The National Council on Privatization, NCP, in a meeting chaired by Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo on Tuesday, seeks the approval for free health care and improved past sector to the benefits of millions of Nigerians. The Vice President, while presiding over the Council meeting, approved the preparation and presentation to President Muhammadu Buhari, a draft, le draft legislative instrument to enact the health sector reform bill and associated legislation. In a tweet by the spokesman to the Vice President, Laalu Akonde, revealed that among issues discussed by the NCP include the past sector and comprehensive health care reforms. Members of the NCP include some ministers, the CBN governor and the director general of the Bureau of Public Enterprises, who doubles as the secretary of the council. And joining us now is Dr. Ruki Ugumba. Good morning, Dr. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us this early from Canada. Right, let's, let's go straight into the matter. Many have said that COVID-19 has posed the huge decay in our health sector, but surely the decay was evident for all to see before now. What's your thought? Absolutely. Um, the healthcare um, reform that the um, vice president talked about has really been long overdue. I, I know that there was the health, uh, National Health Act that said 1% of the consolidated revenue was to go to the healthcare. And of course, if you have the 2020 budget of 10.59 trillion, you expect that the 1% will be allocated to the healthcare, and we haven't seen that. So the healthcare is underfunded. Of course, that would show because if you don't have good funding, you can't have good healthcare. In the United Kingdom, for example, you have 100 billion pounds for 60 million people for their health care. That's the National Health, I mean, sure, um, National Health Service. In Canada, we spend much more than that, actually, for about 33 million people. So you can see the deficit in budgeting is also a problem. Of course, we don't have the actual money reaching down to the hospitals, to the people. Even that budget that is underfunded gets released usually at half percent so 50 percent if you're lucky will get released to your to your institution and they do it in monthly um, allowances and allocations grossly inadequate now for healthcare to work properly it has to start at the grassroots so the primary health centers really should be the bread and butter of, of um, our health care mm -hmm. and if you don't have that functioning properly Obviously, you're not going to have access. No access, no health care. Look at what this coronavirus has exposed. Mm -hmm. Like you said, people are running from pillar to post um, trying to find ventilators. We found in the entire country, they didn't even have 200 ventilators that were functioning. Mm -hmm. Entire country of 200 million people. Mm -hmm. So again, if you have a serious pandemic where respiratory infections will be the cause of death, and no ventilators. You can imagine if it really catches on, what's going to happen? Yeah, It'll be true. a child's play, what's been happening all over the world. So yes, we have very, very big deficiencies in our health systems, right. starting from the budgeting to the actual resource allocation to actual, what's it called, expertise and training of the medical personnel. All right. Let, All let's these... push forward a bit. Uh, we hear of health sector reform, reforms rather, by way of draft bills. As a health practitioner, is it a case of more bills or enforcement of existing bills? Very interesting question. So, like you said, there was a National Health Act with 1% consolidated revenue, which in 2018, our same vice president said it will be implemented, which we know wasn't. And so we have existing health bills that have not been properly implemented. So that's where we start. Now, you talk about access. No healthcare system is free anywhere. So even when you say it's free in Canada, someone paid for it. Mm -hmm. So our, our taxes paid for our healthcare. So it's not visible to the user, but we have paid for it. So how do we overcome that? Since we're not paying taxes so well in Nigeria, and it's not a good, huge source of revenue, even though the FIR has increased the revenue to so many different drives, it hasn't been applied to the health uh, um, system. And so they're talking about health insurance schemes. There's a national health insurance scheme. Many states have bought that and bought state um, insurance schemes, but still there's no coverage. 
even I'm from Delta State, the Delta State Health Insurance Scheme was enacted, um, law was enacted in 2016. Till now, it's not, re it's not, it's not made a difference because you go with your health insurance scheme, you get there, and then you find so many things are not covered by that health insurance scheme. And so you end up paying out of pocket. So at the end of the day, healthcare is too costly, and I don't know what reforms would do mm. if new bills are needed, but we need to spend in the health sector. That's right. the bottom line. Right, and thanks. after you spend, we need to ensure that the money spent is well allocated for mm -hmm. the purpose for which it was spent. All right.